How are we all doing? I hope everyone's keeping well out there. So you might recall a couple of months back I did a video on a Bush BS35. Well now I've got two. I've another one here on the bench. And um, as I said in that video, I always wanted one of these. Because there was one in the um, barber shop across the road from the house uh, when I was a kid. And he used to be up on a tall shelf in the corner um, playing Atlantic 252. Which was a great station. Wish to bring it back. Anyway, um, so now I have another one. As I, I wanted one for years. The only ones I ever got my hands on were ones that were completely woodworm filled, and that's where I got the diet last. That's over the bench. So we're gonna have a look at this and see well what's gonna be involved in getting it going again. I suspect just the usual. However, I have already plugged it in, and it does not light up or come on, which I will confirm now. No bangs, no lights, and uh, no valves lighting up. So, it could be just a dirty switch, or maybe one of the contacts in the switch. Maybe something in here, I don't know, but we'll... Either way, we'll have to open it up anyway. So, I'll turn it around, and we'll get the back off. And we'll have a little look in. Um, these are the lovely radio. I'm quite keen on these. Although, I've seen another one there a while ago, which was a model up from this again. It's the export version that was made in London. These were made over here by Bush Ireland. And it's an EBS 44. It's in a slightly larger cabinet with uh, medium wave and a whole rake of uh, short wave band spreads. Um, but it also has a push pull output stage. Uh, these are single ended. And so that one has a, the EBS 44 has a push pull output stage. And an RF stage as well, so it'll be comparable to the Pi International, the sort of that, that level of set, so a very high end set. One of them come up there for sale a couple of weeks ago, but I didn't get it, it was too far away, it was up and dirty, so I left it alone. So hopefully, it's gone to uh, someone who can appreciate it. So we're in. Good, heavy, thick, original layer of dust, which is what we like to say. And the mains transformer is set for 230 volts. Um, we usually set them for 250, just to give the valves an easy time. But however, and uh, the card back is in good condition as well, which is nice to see. Uh, it's got the... Uh, the rubber wiring, um, but it's actually in good nick. Usually, when you uh, <clears throat> the rubber coated wiring is usually in an awful state, crumbling and shorting out and whatnot. But um, it's not actually bad at all. So we mightn't be too bad. Um, I'll get the chassis out. There's just the two screws here to, that um, hold the chassis in place. Two screws either end. So knobs off first, if they want to come off, the knobs just pull off on these, there's no, um, there's no grub screw, it's just a spring clip. So, you usually can get the knobs off on this. Spring clip is rusted onto the shaft, which can happen. Ah, there we go. That wasn't too bad. I've had the worst than that. And quite a lot of dust in this. It's obviously lived in a shed for quite a while. Now, the thing to remember before I go yanking this out, uh, 
covered this in the last video I'm sure but there's two little clips that go into the dial that you have to pull out if you just yank the chassis out you could snap the dial card and that's never good this is filthy and the bush are quite good they give you a decent bit of lead to work with and we can see there's quite a few dead wood lights in the bottom of the cabinet there and a few not so dead things as well <laughs> uh, anyway let's spin her around and have a look underneath has she had any work done? she has We can see there's been a little bit of work done at some stage. I'm gonna take the phone out of the uh, stand. Give you a look in. There's a big electrolytic and then there's a spider's a lot of spider's eggs in there. We get rid of them. And it's empty. Uh, now what is that? 16 microfarads, 450 volt. And it's not connected to anything. Although I take it I was probably put on with a snot of solder here and it snapped. But um, we'll just leave that floating for now. That's not going to stop it working. It might just hum a lot. Um I'll check the main switch. So I'll just get my multimeter. The volume control changed as well at some stage. So hopefully the switch will be alright. Sorry too. Okay, no problems there. Mm, nothing going on at this end. And check the fuse. Sometimes people take the fuse out of the plug and put the plug back together. Ah, all right. That wasn't so bad. So, I just realised I was walking off camera there, sorry. Then it's got pulled out of the plug. So check the plug first is model of the story here. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll take the pull the dial card out so I can put the back down somewhere. And then we'll put the plug back on. And we'll see what happens. I'm just gonna plug this in. I'm not gonna try and reform anything. We'll just see what we'll go with what goes. Okay, stand back and wait for the bang. I'll 
started out on my way action. Bye. Oil lamps must be blown anyway. The valves are starting to light up. Oil lights do spray into action. It's a bit strange. One of them. The rectifier is not lit. So it's not. What is that? The rectifier is lit now. It is lit. So we valve heaters, but we I don't think we've any HT. So I'll tell you what, we'll plug it out. And I get on the electrolytic here. Can you see the meter in the dark? It's better. And um, plug it back on in and we will see. Two hundred and seventy uh, on the reservoir, and one hundred and twenty-one on the smoother. Just a little. I oh, wonder is the sound output transformer open circuit? Yeah, that's the point. Oh, hold on a minute. There we go. The speaker was switched off. There's a little screw here on the back, which you on do if you just want to run an extension speaker. Go for the simple things first. Let's try an area there. Where you quick and see. Don't leave a room like this too long. Boomerang Dassey and a switch turn throw backstage. <laughs> oh, That's out. Bloody great. 
Radio 4. 426 gigatons of CO2 left globally. To have a 66% chance. No, that's some gone. Sadly, there's no life in the magic eye. Mm. Doesn't surprise me. Medium wave here. Mm. Oh, the same day, the storm. Okay, so they Sorts of noisy things on here as well. Look at this noisy stuff. Try short waves. No, it was it would have been it would have been eight years. Well that's pretty impressive. And that's there's no air on on this either for the area. And the higher bands are closed at this time of the year. Like I won't run it any longer like that. I don't want to damage the output valve. And no doubt that the audio coupling cap is passing DC like mad. That sounds fantastic though, I think you'll agree. Uh, it's quite amazing. <clears throat> Looking at the dust and the dirt and whatever, it probably hasn't been plugged in in maybe 30 years, you wouldn't know. And for it to just come up like that, I didn't give it any special treatment. I didn't try to reform caps or anything else. And the other thing I'll say to you, before I, I leave it, is our friend here was left disconnected. So... For whatever reason this was added at some stage i don't think it's needed so that's quite interesting that's going to be a keeper for sure i'll change all the usual suspects because well i'll change the audio coupling cap for definite and when i'm doing that sure i may as well change the the handful of other waxies that are in there too but um right i'll show you something else now that i'm here um Interesting things to show you. Another thing that I picked up recently. Don't be looking at me bald head. Mystery wooden box. What's in the mystery wooden box, you say? Well, nothing too exciting. I thought it was an ice box. And inside the box is this it looks like something you'd use on a bullock and this and I'm sure people already know what this is I thought it was a label maker 
but it's it's not a label maker it's for American wires and this is basically a transformer that's all it is just a transformer and there's two very nice lights on it I'll turn off the light here so you can see how nice the uh, it's got two lovely lights a little neon for mains in and a little uh, 12 volt bulb for the low low volt out and there's a heating element in this too for right and basically if you had cables or whatever you you see though you can see where someone was practicing with this so if you there's a um, couple of different letters and numbers that you can select with this thumb wheel that goes in and out well, I've no use for this at all, but I thought it was sort of interesting. Um, I'll probably just keep the, the box for something. And I thought this, if I added a, a rectifier in this, it says it's low power is 8 volts out and high power is 10 volts out, AC. So I was thinking if I put a rectifier and a bit of smoothing in there, I might get sort of 12, 13 volts DC out and I could use it for power and battery radios or that such a lovely box uh, like a battery eliminator for transistor radios anyway you can squeeze this thing and see it will print uh, I'm probably not doing it right either there in there No, not really. Anyway, that was that. I thought it was a nice box, if nothing else. So I'll probably use the box for keeping stuff in. I don't have any other use for it, really. But um, I was thinking this would make a nice battery eliminator for transistor radios. Right, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching. This is a bloody great BS35. Very happy with that. I'll, um, I'll do a bit of floating around with that and um, get it going. If I can go with the other one. And uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a nice weekend. Good luck for now.